Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile Escape from the Pit. I've got a few things to show off from my loot haul last episode. Starting with Zoe here, we will see that the jeweled goblet is indeed worth a crap ton of gold. Oh yeah, that's going to pay for some spells and training later. Also, one interesting thing I noticed, we've got a steel tip spear that Zoe's been using. We also picked up a steel spear from the Nefarim. Now, the steel tip spear is your typical pole weapon, two-handed, does a fair bit of damage, good bonus. The steel spear has the exact same damage and bonus, but is in fact a one-handed weapon. This is something that I never actually picked up on as a kid. I think I just assumed that all spears were two-handed. But I may be able to equip this one and also have a shield on my other hand. So, very interesting. I may have to play with that later. One other thing of note is that the throwing knives I picked up, turns out they're not magical. We've got regular throwing knives, and also steel throwing knives, which, if they would ever hit, could actually do some pretty good damage. I'm still convinced that there's a programming error in here somewhere that makes thrown weapon skills garbage. And yet I play with it anyway, because I can. So, now that we've done that... I'm going to sell off this jeweled goblet, and you'll notice we can only ever sell things for about half of their given value, whereas we would buy them for full price. This is how all of the shopkeepers stay in business. We've got over 3,000 gold. Nice. Meanwhile, my cat is wandering around my recording closet again. She does that. So we're going to head out of Kotra and explore a bit more of this lake shore and river in this corner of the underworld. We're actually not far from where the shareware demon would show up in the unregistered version of the game. I remember seeing that one a few times when I was uh, first starting to play this. Meanwhile, in another dimension, suddenly the shareware demon appears. It says, ahem. To the west is a horrendous chasm, which can only be passed by those who have paid their shareware fee. To find out how to perform this blessed act, select Shareware Info on the title screen. It waves and disappears in a puff of sulfurous smoke. Fortunately, this copy is registered, so we don't have to worry about any impassable chasms blocking off half the game. There's a stone pylon here, covered with carvings. Some of them are of lizard men. Hmm. Seems like we are wandering deeper into Slith Zarekai territory. As evidenced by the Slith Zarekai we just ran into. And unlike most of the Nephilim we've been seeing in other up updates, these Sliths are not intimidated enough to run away from combat. That will eventually change, but not for a few more levels. Is it worth a fireball? Sure. And I have confirmed, if it's not on video yet, that the regular Sliths and Slith Warriors are not fire-resistant, but the spellcasters definitely are. Hmm, what's this? From this peninsula, you see a small island to the south. You think you see figures moving back and forth on it. Hmm. Interesting. That may be one of the first things we explore when we actually get a boat. Sign says Fort Dranlon to the north, Kotra to the southeast. And here we've got Fort Dranlon. Hmm. Now this is something we haven't seen yet before. These are magic barriers. 
Uh, they function just like walls, we cannot pass through them. They also function as a sign that this fort gets hit pretty damn hard, in that they have to reinforce their walls with these magical barriers, which are presumably a little easier to put up than full-fledged walls. This fort doesn't have a gate. Instead, there is a passage in, blocked by a series of magical barriers. A soldier peeks out through a window. Greetings, visitor. Please say your name and business here. So we can threaten, we can lie, we can give a regular answer, or we can leave. These are humans and we don't feel like uh, ticking them off, so let's be honest. He nods and notes it down. Then, a little bit later, a gap opens in the barrier. You hear, come on in. Can't be too careful the way things are nowadays. You see one of the fort soldiers. Marlin. I guard unceasingly against the slith menace. I also steadfastly maintain my lack of individuality in order to be a more efficient killing machine. <laughs> I love it when game devs lampshade uh, some of the sillier things in their games. Oh yeah, you can see this wall here has been cracked from getting hit by the enemies. So, Fort Dranlon. Very thick double walls. Magical barriers. We're getting the impression that the Sliths are certainly a strong enemy to be reckoned with. And I thought I would be able to enter on the other side of the fort, and I was wrong. Uh, looks like the archer is the same as everybody else. Yep, they're all named Marlin. Wonder if they're good actors like Brando. You look much more interesting than a soldier. A heavy set woman with blue robes and a staff watches the river carefully. She has a serious expression and short brown hair. She whispers, Shh, I'm Shannon. Be quiet. I have to listen. Look, I'm busy. Okay. I'm not sure if we can get anything out of her, but I believe that her job is to look and listen for sliths coming up through the water. Because sliths are, if not fully amphibious, then definitely very good swimmers. Crude wooden sign says Captain Rosie. Probably the person in charge of this place. A man in a heavy breastplate sits and nervously shuffles papers. Ah, adventurers! Welcome to Fort Dranlon. I'm Captain Rosie. I look after this fort. This is the front against the Slith Menace, the first line of defense. The Slith Zerakai. Nasty warriors. Powerful mages. They batter the walls with fireballs, trying to knock them down. Fortunately, we have a mage to repair them. He grunts. If only we knew what they were planning. We have spies, but they've done little good. If you ever find any evidence of what the Slith Zerakai are up to, bring it here. I'll reward you well. Mm hmm. New mission thread. Cool. Okay, so look, I'm busy is just the generic Fort Drenlon response of I don't know about this. And uh, their mage is Myrwen. She fills the holes with magic barriers. Weren't for her, this fort would have fallen long ago. And we're gonna have to ask her about the magic barriers if we want to know more. A crude sign says, Barracks. A wooden sign says, Myrwin, Fort Mage. Must always check bookshelves. Ah, well. You see a short woman with long, curly brown hair and a very broad smile. Hi there, I'm Myrwin the Mage. Welcome to my little home. Oh, I don't know. Working with the army, I suppose. Getting to see lots of sliths really close up. Hmm, that sounds terrifying. 
I lend them a fireball here, a haste spell there. At least, that's what I do some of the time. Most of the time, I put up magic barriers. Yeah. You see, the Sliths have a lot of mages. They've been hitting the wall with spells, trying to knock it down. I fill the holes with barriers. Then, when need be, I dispel them. Yep, they have really admirable mages. You know, I've heard a prisoner talk about an amazing tome they own. Yeah, a prisoner told me, swore up and down, that their mages have this powerful tome in their fort nearby, in the swamp. I wish I could meet someone who could steal it. Us mages are supposed to teach Dispel Barrier to as few people as possible. Mage's secret and all. But I want that Slith magic tome. It would be a great help to know their secrets. Bring it to me, and I will teach you the spell. <laughs> that is an excellent spell for an adventuring party to have. It gives us access to some really good stuff. Granted, we're going to have to fight through some pretty tough Sliths to actually get that tome and get the spell. But... A crude wooden sign says, Supply Building. Hello there, shopkeep. An amazingly heavily built man, clad in iron armor, shuffles crates around behind the counter. I'm Silo. I'm the outfitter here. I keep the soldiers in armor and stuff. I also have supplies for travelers who have the bad luck of being passing through. Well, you can buy food from me. Have plenty of spare rations. I have some missiles if you need more. His voice gets quieter. I also have some, um, tools. So tools include sapphires and fine lockpicks. I'll go ahead and buy a set of fine lockpicks for Kaylee. I don't remember if she has fine or regular lockpicks at the moment. Also buy crude bow, flint arrows, and darts. Not today. Food prices are actually pretty decent over here. A young man in white armor with an Ankh design on the chest greets you. He has a fresh scar on his forehead. I'm Todrick. He smiles, then winces. Apparently the scar still smarts. I provide healing for the soldiers of the fort, and passers-by. I also occasionally help in the fighting. He touches the scar gingerly. I'm afraid so. I'm not too good at it. Not too long ago, a slith swung one of those nasty two-pronged spears at me, and I didn't duck quite fast enough. To tell the truth, I'd rather be in a nice quiet chapel somewhere. Or traveling. But isn't traveling awfully dangerous around here? I love to travel. I've even been to the north. There's a huge cave up there. It's dangerous to go because of the spiders, but the sights are wonderful. My main goal is to see the crystal cave. We found that it's to the south. It's not in the best shape right now, but it's totally there. I've only heard of it. Around here, there's supposed to be this really hard-to-find cave, just filled with these humming quartz crystals. I've heard it's damaged, and not what it once was, but it's still a sight. Hmm, so yet another hint to that particular questline. So we can buy healing here if we need it, which we basically don't. And that is really about it for Fort Dranlon. It's a pretty small fort. Just got a couple of important quest threads. So... Ah, dang it. And we're back. That can't possibly be enough for a whole episode yet, so let's explore a little bit further. Fort Dranlon, 40 miles west. There's a few little bits up here that I never got to. You have found some sort of encampment. Supplies are scattered about, but nobody seems to be here. One leather rucksack contains a gourd filled with a black, tarry substance. You take it. Other than that, you find dried fish and a few crude stone knives. Nothing worth taking. Then, as you leave, 
you notice that the campsite's owners have returned. Oh, joy. <laughs> Combat monsters fled. That? Okay, that was weird. I haven't seen that happen before. We've got Slith warriors, priests, and a mage, even though the monster icon we saw on the world map was a spider. Okay. Hooray. Very exciting. Not really. Hello. At some point, a large group camped here. Now only a scattered bonfire and a broken knife remain. Okay. We are actually pretty close to one more thing that I'd like to finish off here. There is a fort up here, and some very brave Nephilim, probably because they've got a chieftain. A couple of fireballs later. Where was I? Yes, there's this fort right here that was uh, occupied by the evil cultists. And I never quite finished exploring it. There's this bit down here and two rooms over here. I think I had to run off because I was a little bit too low level for this place at the time. Okay, that's a lot of guys. Let's take advantage of our fourth level spells here. And as always, my favorite fireball. Let's target this so as not to get malfried. Seven and fourteen damage? I thought I cursed you. Yet yeah, that's more like the damage I expect from a cursed en for a cursed enemy. Anybody on this side of the gate? No, we got him. So yeah, there's not actually much of interest on the south side. Just an alternate path into the main body of the fort. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to get my slows and curses out again. work through walls. Ow. That's not fair. You have Flame Strike and I don't. Flame Strike is the priest equivalent to Fireball, but it's a fifth level spell instead of three. Oh, that is quite a lot of acolytes. Let's see how you all like a fireball to the face. Yay, so many kills for a river. Oof, that was foolish. Ooh. This evil priest must be pretty high level if he can cast a ravage enemy. Kaylee is slowed, damaged, and poisoned. Very rude, sir. I do not approve. I curse you! Hmm. 
Actually, let's cure that poison while we've got a moment. <sighs> See, they've got Flame Strike, but they don't know how to use it. They target it, so it only gets two of my guys instead of all four. Slow the both of you. And dead. Wonder if the evil acolytes are a higher level than the regular white robed acolytes. May well be. Ooh, fair bit of gold. Nice. Was there anything on this altar? At the front of the temple, you find an altar of black stone with red swirls. Dominating its surface is a huge bowl filled with slowly burning herbs and incense, along with other strange things. The smell is heavy, bitter, and disturbing. We can put out the flame or desecrate it, but they'll both have about the same effect. You assault the altar. It starts to vibrate slowly at first, then faster. As the keening begins to overpower you, someone appears to take vengeance. Oh. It is a good thing I saved before doing that. Ouch! So we've got... Demon. Demon. Mung Demon, who did better than the Hakai and managed to kill one of my guys. Hmm. Maybe we'll try that again later. <laughs> These two doors are locked. Kaylee, do the thing. Alright. I've discovered that I can have any two of weapon, shield, and lockpicks equipped. Oh, I did have fine lockpicks. Oh well. Did it work? Oh, come on. That's one open. Fine, then. We'll use a spell. Really? Finally. Oh, that's lovely. We've got some undeads. A spirit and a white. Wait, did they actually notice me? Well, they darn well did now. Oh, hi, friend. Oh, no, that's River. Brr. Slow group. Bless party. Next round, I need to do some healing. Whoa! Kaylee even did 18 damage. That is very nice, and also shows off the effect of Blessed Hero, Cursed Enemy. And we're gonna kill off the white faster because he can drain experience points. Very nice. That's everybody. Nothing interesting in the crates as usual. Ugh. Kaylee, you are not really on your game today. Careful poison. Ooh. A ring and more throwing knives. And is there anything good in the head priest's bedroom? Nope. I do want to see if I can take on some more demons, but not right now. We'll be back in a moment.
Well, we're back. We're not alone. But so far I only see one acolyte and one soldier. So I think we've taken out most of the uh, upper leadership all by now. There, see? A throwing knife actually hit somebody, did not great damage, but some. Ah, Captain. This may be a tougher fight than I thought. Slow them, bless us. And damage that guy. And I am not using up all my spell points before fighting demons again. Okay. Still blessed. Maybe I'll throw on a light heal. This should go a little better than last time. Significantly better, yes. Ugh, although I went from being blessed to cursed and slowed. Yuck. Ah, nuts. Reload. Okay, I actually get my turn in combat first. Wonderful. Say, Mal, do you have anything I should be doing? Hmm. I'm going to use a speed potion. What do you mean I'm still slowed? That sucks. Hey boy. Medium strength potion does function as a blessing, at least strong enough to undo the curse. Group. I cannot wait until I find where I can get the 5th level mage spells again. And Kaylee, let's you start... Oh, oh, Mal is still poisoned. Ugh, missed that somehow. Seriously, demon, how do you cast fireball so that you only damage one of my characters when there's a whole cluster of, like, four here? <sighs> Their stupidity is half of how I'm going to survive this. Please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. <laughs> ah, maybe I shouldn't have complained about the demon only targeting one person with a fireball. Ow, 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 ow. Can I fireball the demons? Will that do anything? Not so much. Nah. 
Oh yeah, Zoe's got a ring of fire resistance, that's why she didn't take any damage. Dang it, I need to he I need to haste Simon as well so he can be healing and blessing everybody. No, Simon, there we go. Cease to be dying. What? What do you mean, can't see? This again? Garbage. Oh, not Simon's out of spell points. He's no good. Who needs a cure poison more? Mal needs a cure poison. And, ooh, I get three turns? Nice. Finally, he's dead. And he's dead, too. Yeah, let's put out one more heal. And then start beating up this last guy. Seriously, do not know how I managed to beat that Hakai last time. We're gonna leave the darts behind because darts are pretty much always useless. And that is it for the remote temple. We got quite a few level ups in that one. Pretty nice. So I think when I come back next time, I may invest some of my large amount of gold here into a little bit more training. So, I'm going to slowly work my way back to civilization. I will see you guys next time.